Star Wars Episode IX, The Rise of Skywalker, was directed by J.J. Abrams and stars Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, and Adam Driver. Emperor Palpatine has returned to lead the First Order and lay waste to the Republic once and for all. Both Rey and Kylo Ren are racing to find him, with the Emperor hoping to recruit Kylo to his cause and finally get rid of Rey. And through it all, the First Order and the Resistance are still going at it tooth and nail, with plenty of space battles and laser sword fights and all the stuff you'd expect from Star Wars. So I had heard things about this movie and had a pretty good idea that it was not going to be anywhere near as good as The Last Jedi. I even heard some people saying it just flat out sucked. Now that I've seen it myself, it's fine. That's it. It's just fine. It's nowhere near as bad as I expected it to be based on the reviews. It is, however, about as dumb as I expected. And I've heard some people say, well, it's Star Wars. Of course it's going to be dumb. And I don't know if I agree with that. I do think Star Wars is inherently a bit silly. I mean, this is, at its core, a story about space wizards fighting space Nazis. Some silliness is expected, but silly and dumb are not quite the same thing. There is a distinction there. The Empire getting taken down by Ewoks. That's silly. Midichlorians. That's dumb. If you want an example that solely deals with the rise of Skywalker, um, this won't mean anything to you unless you've actually seen the movie, but... <laughs> that was silly. The final scene in this movie involving Rey and Kylo Ren. Dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. But I don't think it has to be dumb, and I think part of the problem is Rian Johnson kind of spoiled us with The Last Jedi, where he took an inherently very silly franchise and injected some actual nuance into it. He put ideas in there that challenged the audience's perception of what Star Wars could actually be. And I knew The Rise of Skywalker was not going to top The Last Jedi, with all due respect to J.J. Abrams, who I do actually like. I think he's a very talented filmmaker. But Rise of Skywalker was always going to be to The Last Jedi what Return of the Jedi was to The Empire Strikes Back. The really weird thing is I've actually heard people claim that the reason The Rise of Skywalker wasn't as good as it could have been is because of how The Last Jedi ended, which, regardless of whether you like The Last Jedi or not, that argument makes no sense at all. With the way that movie ended, Johnson basically left it open for J.J. or Colin Trevorrow or whoever picked up the mantle to do basically whatever the hell they wanted. If J.J. didn't know where to go with that, that's on him. While I don't think The Rise of Skywalker is as good as it potentially could have been, I am willing to cut it a little bit of slack based on a couple of factors. First of all, the abrupt departure of Colin Trevorrow from the project basically meant that when J.J. came back, he had to start over in the middle of pre-production, and that certainly cannot have been easy. And of course, there was the death of Carrie Fisher, which I think they handled about as well as they possibly could have. The alternative would have been to leave her out of the movie entirely, and honestly, I prefer what we got. So let's talk about the movie, and I will warn you, there may be some minor spoilers here and there. I will avoid talking about any major plot points, but a few things may come out, so just keep that in mind. So based on the trailers, which showed our heroes visiting the remains of the Death Star from Return of the Jedi, and the echoes of Palpatine's laughter as they did, I expected his ghost would be, like, haunting it or something. I was completely wrong. He's still alive, somehow. There was an offhand reference to some kind of cloning technology, so I gather his body was cloned and his spirit somehow transferred into the clone's body, because I guess that's a thing now. And apparently, he's been pulling the strings behind the First Order the entire time. When Kylo Ren asks him about Snoke, Palpatine says, I made Snoke. And my first thought was, okay, so you're the one who trained Snoke. But no, no, no. When he says he made Snoke, he means he literally made Snoke. Like, Snoke was apparently created in a goddamn lab, and we even see a tank with some Snoke bits floating inside of it. Snoke bits. That sounds like a cereal. Kellogg's Snoke bits, part of a balanced breakfast. This was about the point where I realized this movie is gonna be dumb. And, you know, at the end of The Last Jedi, I was perfectly fine not knowing Snoke's origin story. I still kinda wish I didn't. Because, 
having a mysterious background is certainly better than literally created in a lab. And do you remember how The Last Jedi's message was that you didn't need to be descended from greatness to be a hero? Lineage didn't matter. Literally anyone could be a hero. That was one of the things about The Last Jedi that I really liked. Apparently JJ didn't because he threw that right out the window. And I knew he was going to do that too. I just, somehow I just knew. Without giving the whole thing away, they do reveal who Rey is descended from, and it is a character that has been featured in previous Star Wars movies. And I will say this, I did not see it coming. Because it makes no sense. And I can't really explain why without getting into spoilers, but I will simply say, do the math. It doesn't work. This just felt totally unnecessary. I was perfectly fine with Rey just being Rey. We didn't need this massive retcon, which not only retcons The Last Jedi, but The Force Awakens and pretty much everything that came before. Now, before someone brings this up, I am aware this is not the first time that Star Wars has done a retcon. I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but Luke and Leia were not originally supposed to be siblings. But Star Wars has been able to do these retcons before without insulting our intelligence, and I don't feel like that's the case here. You know what else I like from The Last Jedi? Rose. I guess JJ didn't, because now she's basically a glorified background character. And when Rey, Finn, and Poe go on their little MacGuffin hunt in this movie, they gave a really lame excuse for her not going along. I mean, God, it was bad. This movie also introduces some new Force powers, which, again, is not the first time they've done that. I mean, the Force lightning showed up in Return of the Jedi pretty much out of nowhere, but it kind of worked because the Emperor was supposed to be more powerful than anyone we had met up to that point. And of course, we had the Force projection in The Last Jedi, and that movie offered a perfectly good explanation for why we had never seen it before, because when Luke did it, it killed him. The Rise of Skywalker introduces new powers with no rhyme or reason at all. It only really works if you subscribe to the it's magic, we don't need to explain it philosophy. That being said, the force powers that are introduced in The Rise of Skywalker are by no means the dumbest force powers that have ever been introduced in the Star Wars universe. And in fact, I don't think we will ever get something dumber than actual voodoo dolls. Yes, those are a thing. That happened in the Clone Wars animated series, and that is canon. Voodoo dolls are a thing in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. And there's another new thing introduced in this movie that doesn't have anything to do with the Force. It's more of a technological invention that I really can't talk about without going into spoilers, but I will say this much. You know, in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek, how he basically had the characters invent a long-range, like, interstellar transporter. And in so doing, he basically made starships obsolete in a franchise that is pretty exclusively about starships. Think along those lines. This is a trap J.J. falls into every now and then. He comes up with these really cool ideas, but doesn't fully think about the implications of those ideas. Here's another example of something that was kind of dumb in this movie. There's a scene where we have a whole lot of Star Destroyers taking off, and they make a comment that Star Destroyers need a little bit of help taking off from a planet, which makes sense, but their explanation is they need some kind of external navigation system to guide them because when they're in the planet's atmosphere, they don't know which way is up. Shouldn't the opposite be true? Like, when you're in the planet's atmosphere, that's the one time you do know which way is up. Which way is the planet? Okay, it's the other way. It's when you're in space that you don't know which way is up because every way is up. And the only point of this is to give them something to blow up in the final battle, which, you know, there just, there had to be a better way. There was also a plot thread involving Rey and Finn that was just mysteriously dropped. And I've heard an explanation online for where they were supposed to be going with that, and boy, I am not buying that explanation. But, you know what, just for fun, let's pretend that really was where they were going to go with it. Why didn't they go there with it then? Instead, they just kind of left it hanging with no resolution at all, and I really don't know why, unless that was something that had to get cut out of the film so they could get the runtime under two and a half hours. That, that may be the case, for all I know. 
What really gets me about the issues I have with The Rise of Skywalker is it seems like many of them could have been fixed, or if not fixed, at least improved with very minor changes. And it just seems to me like the screenplay needed another pass. But again, because JJ came into the project late, they may just not have had time for that. But anyway, good stuff, because there is a lot of good stuff happening here. There are still some great action sequences, some fun space battles, some fun lightsaber battles. Although I will say the lightsaber battle at the end of the movie was not shot very well. It's in a very dark environment with the strobing effects. Speaking of which, if you suffer from epilepsy, don't go see this movie. Just don't. There was some fun banter between the characters. Uh, Could have used a little more, I thought, but what we got was good. There's a really funny bit involving C-3PO and a translation, which, oh my god, that was so well done. We did get a few new characters. We got Carrie Russell as Zori Bliss, who is someone that Poe Dameron used to run around with, and I really liked her character. She was a lot of fun, as was the tiny alien that she works for. Naomi Aki's character, Janna, was a total badass, and unfortunately I can't say too much more about her without spoiling anything, but yeah, liked her. And we have another new droid called Dio, who didn't get to do a whole lot in this movie, but he was funny. And it's another new toy to sell to the kids. And I said this with The Last Jedi, and I can say it again here, I am very happy that they have not forgotten that Leia is actually Force-sensitive, and in fact was training to be a Jedi at one point, and now she is the one training Rey. And like I said, I thought they handled this character about as well as they possibly could have given what they had to work with, and I felt they gave her a proper send-off. While I wasn't terribly happy with the direction they went with Emperor Palpatine, Ian McDermott is still really good at this character. He is every bit as menacing as he ever was, if not more so. When we first meet him in this movie, he is frightening to look at, even with the dim lighting and that strobing effect, which again, if you have epilepsy, don't go see this movie. But yeah, and it seems like his body wasn't cloned perfectly because it's still like missing a few bits and in fact he can't even walk under his own power he has to be carried around by some kind of machine and yet despite that there is still never any doubt that this guy is a legitimate threat and i think that is a testament to ian mcdermott's performance and while i wasn't terribly happy with the retcon regarding ray's backstory what they did with it was actually pretty cool at times. They led to some interesting moments and some very emotional moments, and Ridley's performance is what made those moments work. And Lando is finally back! Yay! Well, back in live action form, I should say. He showed up in the animated shows once or twice. But yeah, he is finally back and still as smooth as he ever was. And he's not the only one who came back, of course, and there was at least one returning character that I did not expect to see, and that scene involving that character was so well done. Just excellent stuff. Another plus is JJ did not abuse the lens flare. He has shown incredible restraint there in recent years and good on him for that. In fact, I think there was only one moment in this movie where there was a noticeable lens flare and I think JJ only threw that in there so you know it was him. And it took him three movies to do it, but we finally got all three of the super best friends, Poe, Ray, and Finn, on an adventure together, which is really all I've ever wanted since The Force Awakens. Overall, it's not great, it's not terrible, it is dumb, but it's fine. I got to see some huge-ass space battles on a big IMAX screen, and I can't really complain about that. If you're on the fence, I do think it is worth seeing despite its shortcomings. It's still Star Wars, and I still had fun. And that's all I have to say about The Rise of Skywalker. Till next time, may the Force be with you.